Hey everyone, C Stan here with the Lord of the Rings Living Card Game. I'm back after a short break. Although uh, I wasn't taking a break from Lord of the Rings entirely, I've been working a lot on a deck builder, actually, an online deck builder for the game that has a built in quest log. And I hope to make that available to the general audience. Um, in the coming weeks. Uh, but in the meantime, I wanted to just record another video because the Grey Havens has come out and it has a ton of awesome player cards that I wanted to, to put in a deck. So what I have here is a sort of Grey, I guess a Grey Havens Noldor deck in that it's a Noldor themed deck at the current state of the game since the Grey Havens has come out. So in the last couple expansions, we've had a number of nice Noldor cards, notably um, Arwen and Elven Light and Lords the Eldar. But the Grey Havens introduced both Galdor and Círdan and to the Sea, which are all amazing Noldor cards. I made this deck in as mainly a questing willpower type deck that isn't too great at combat. Um, so I don't know how well it's going to do against this quest. Um, it's yeah, it's meant with multiplayer in mind, which means I'm, I also managed to build this deck without including Stuart of Gondor. It was tough to do, but this is under the assumption that maybe someone else is playing steward and relies mainly onto the sea to provide the necessary um, resource acceleration. And Arwen herself, of course. Okay, so the first quest of the Grey Havens is the voyage across Belar. Gear. I'm not entirely sure how to say that. But the Dream Chaser and her fleet depart from the Grey Havens in search of the island from Calphon's dreams. Only a week out from the coast, the black sails of Corsair ships can be seen in pursuit. We've got our prepare a Corsair deck, uh, which is already done for us. Good. And... Shuffle up the stage twos. Okay, so we have we have four stage twos and a stage three. So let's shuffle these up and put stage three on the bottom. And the cards that we have to put in the encounter in the in the uh, staging area are already there. So looks like we can just get on with the quest. So there's some new mechanics here. The main one is uh, sailing tests. At the beginning of each quest phase, you have to exhaust a number of characters. Well, first you have to adjust your your heading. So we've got this heading dial here. And right now, it is, the sun is on the top. I wish you could... Okay, here. We can see that the, the sun is on the top. And that means we're on a good heading. And then every at the beginning of each quest phase, we rotate it counterclockwise so that the next worst heading is is up. And then we do our sailing test. We exhaust X number of characters, then exhaust the top X cards of the deck. And for every success symbol, you get to adjust your heading um, one one notch toward the true heading. So if we're here and we see one success symbol, we get back. If we're here and we see two success symbols, we get to go back. Uh, of course, you can't get better than the best heading and you can't get worse than the worst heading. Okay. So I believe I have that right. Um, yeah. 
sailing test. Uh, okay, can we flip that? For each success symbol found on the looked at encounter cards, you may shift your heading on course. Okay. So, as this requires exhausting characters at the beginning of the quest phase, that means they won't be able to actually commit to the quest. There's also this boarding mechanic. If we engage a ship with a boarding, then we need to bring in some enemies. Okay. So let's see. Um, I, I didn't decide on taking a mulligan. It's because this hand's really nice. So let's just start the first turn. I get three extra cards from your store. Uh, all right, and now I think, oh, something we forgot to do is take control of our fleet. So, yeah, p players prepare their fleet. So someone always has to choose the Dream Chaser. And then when you're playing one player, you actually get to take over a second um Yeah, one other ship. Okay. So I'm actually taking this, the Narlenya. And you might think for an older deck, I would pick the Dawnstar, because you get an additional card each phase. But this reduction of the first ally you play each round is actually better, in my opinion. Because saving one resource is the equivalent of being able to discard two extra cards because you can spend that one resource on Elven Light and that brings back Elven Light and lets you draw a card and that's two cards in your hand that you can that you can use for the discard mechanics so I I believe one resource is better than one card um, okay and now this goes on the Dream Chaser Okay, now, now that we've finished the setup, I am going to discard Elven Light, give Arwen a resource, and mark her with a progress token, indicating I have used her ability this round. Sometimes I forget. And let's see, I will play to the sea for one and I will play deep knowledge for two um, debating here now I think I want to play protector of Lorien for one And I want to save a resource for a test of will. Um, hmm. So I will play the refugee for one as my free ally. So this ally costs one, so I reduce it by one. It's free. And the reason I don't play Deep Knowledge now isn't, is not because I don't want cards, but if I draw into my Dwarven Tomb, then I've got to play either Dwarven Tomb or Will of the West, or I won't be able to recycle my deck. And I realize I could have played Lindir instead of Sylvan Refugee by discarding to for to the sea and then 
making them cost one and then play them for free. However, I have another Linder in my deck and I want to wait to play him until I can make use of his ability. All right, uh, now let's do the sailing. So we adjust off course. Commit three characters. The, Don the Dream Chaser counts as two to the sailing test. And reveal one, success, success. Okay, we've got some successes. So we go back on course. There we go. Now we commit to the quest. We'll do three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Reveal. We got water spout. Uh, so that's ten versus four, five, six, seven, eight. We get two progress. Oh, while you're on course, each ship objective gets plus two willpower. So I actually get two more because I forgot to account for that. For the travel phase, uh, I think I want to go to Water Spout even though it'll damage my ships. Okay, we'll go to Water Spout and it says deal four damage to each ship objective. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Engagement, I will just leave him where he is. Combat, nothing. So we refresh. I lose all these cards. And start a new turn. And draw three additional cards. Okay, so now I've got an interesting choice here. Um, I would like to get Gildor into play. But I don't want to have to discard all this stuff. Uh, I'd also like to get the Elven Jeweler into play as well. Let's see what we can do. We can... Just play the Elven Jeweler. Hmm. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. If we discard to Burning Brand and discard, hmm, that won't work. Yeah, we'll need to spend one from Arwen to bring back Elven Light and draw a card. And now, let's see. I think we have another Elven Light, which we can spend getting another card. So now we have enough to fuel what we want to do, I think. I want to play Elven Jeweler for free using those two. Actually, no. First, I need to play Gildor because I want to reduce his cost by one. So we'll play Gildor. Oh, sorry, first, let's do the proper order here. To the sea, we discard one, two, and. Let's see. Three. Let's just do two. And then he becomes cost three, which is reduced by one from Naranya. So he becomes cost two, which we will pay for. Then we play Elven Jeweler using the two elven lights. There we go. 
And if we don't end up... Um, we don't have a resource for Test of Will. I'm wondering if I should discard Elrond's Council. Ah, uh, um, might be a mistake, but I'm going to hold on to it. Okay, for the sailing test, we go off course, and I guess we'll commit one, two, three, four. Reveal one, two, three, Four, and we got two successes, so we're fine. For the quest, we'll go three, uh, eight, nine, ten, thirteen. Okay, we reveal. And it's a fog bank. Well, fog bank's the active location. Ship enemies do not make engagement checks, cannot attack, and cannot be attacked. So 13 versus 6, 7, 8. So that'll be 5, but we're going to boost ourselves up by 1. So 14 versus 8, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we travel to the fog bank. Discard, give Arwen a resource. And start a new round. Draw three. Discard Daron's runes to draw two. And discard. Oh, I forgot to reduce my threat by three when I played Alron's Council last turn. Now, yeah, I guess I will discard Unexpected Courage. Then play Deep Knowledge. Go up two. Draw two. Now we will play Sailor of Loon by discarding one card. And the first ally reduces cost by one, so he's free. Uh, we'll also play the Burning Brand down here. And now we got a strong defender who is immune to shadows. Uh, of course, I don't think it's going to be that useful because... I so far, I haven't had any combat yet. Now, what else should I do? I guess I can discard a card to Arwen. And, yeah, we'll just go to the sailing test. So we go off course and commit... One, two, three, four. Reveal one, two, three, four. Oh, good. So we finally found a success. And we can go back on proper heading. Questing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Reveal. Either remove all progress from the current quest and re raise each player's threat by four or shift your heading off course. Well, if we shift off course, not only will we complete the quest stage this round and we will not get to skip a quest stage, but we'll also have to engage this guy because he gets minus 15 engagement costs when you're off course. So we'll do the plus four thing, one, two, three, four, and play Elrond's Council, one, two, three, give ourselves 16, 16 versus six is 10 progress, that's five here, and one, two, three, four, five there, and since we're on the proper heading, 
we get to look at the top two stages of the quest deck, one, two, pick one of them, and place the other one on the bottom. Into the storm or cursed mists. I think I like the idea of cursed mists more because I'm not really a combat deck. I don't I don't really know that one has more combat than another, but that's just how it sounds. So search the encounter deck and discard pile for one copy of Fog Bank. I think I just completed that. So I'll pull it from the discard pile because I would I don't want to remove it from the deck because it's a really nice card to see come out of the deck. So it's in the staging area. While you're off course, each non-ship ally gets minus two willpower. Okay. Travel phase, we will go here. Engagement, there's no one to engage. So that's about it. We can start a new round. Um, let me refresh and then use Galdor's ability to give myself an extra six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. And start a new turn. And ear store to draw one, two, three. Okay. Here we go. So uh, let's see what we can play. We can get a bunch of allies into play for sure. And I can have a harp ready to save my test of will. Um, okay, let's play our sailor by discarding Gildor for to the sea and then playing him for free as the first ally. And then we'll play the harp down for two. Then we'll discard two to play the Elven Jeweler. Oh, wait. One, two. Let me see. I want to discard a different two, I think. Let me spend one resource from Arwen to get back um, Elven Light and draw a card. Okay, shoot. Now we're going to have to spend more resource than we wanted to. Well, let's see what we can do here. I can play Elven Jeweler using this and this guy. I can play the Evening Star for two. And since there's a copy in my discard pile, we get to perform the action twice, which is to place two progress on any location. So we'll go two here and then two here, and that'll be removed. Now I will... I'm gonna have to discard Elven Light for Arwen's ability. And use Dwarven Tomb for one to get back Will of the West. Uh, of course, I could always just hold on to Dwarven Tomb. with the harp. Hmm. That might be a better idea. So, let me play Elven Jeweler discarding Unexpected Courage and the Tomb and then exhaust the harp to keep the tomb.
Okay, now I think we're done. So we go off course and commit one, two, three, four, five to the sailing test. One, two, three, four, five. Well, we definitely succeed. And we go back on course. Now we commit one, two, three, four. Oh, shoot. My top card is not an event. Okay, so there are only one. I didn't plan that too well. I think I discarded both of these for the jeweler, but in the wrong order. Anyway, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, yeah, thirteen. And reveal one. Either shift your heading off course or deal one damage to each exhausted character. Okay, well, off course is bad, so these two guys get damaged. Here we go. We lose two willpower, so we're only at one, two, three, four, five, um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And. Uh, 13 minus 2 is 11. We get 5 here and 6 there. Just enough. And we're on course, so we get to pick the next two. 1, 2. And let's see, do we want the Divination or the Star's Guidance? I'll go with the Star's Guidance no particular reason. Find Starlit Sea and add it to the staging area. So this doesn't do anything when you're on course, which is nice. While you are off course, each ocean location gets plus one threat. Alright, travel phase, we can just go there. And refresh phase. End of the round, I discard both of these, but I use the harp to hold on to the tomb. And we start a new turn. And draw three additional cards. Okay. Uh... We get to play Oh, we're creeping up on 35 threat here. I am tempted to use my Dwarven Tomb to get an Elrond's Council. Let's play him for free. Sorry, her. And then her for one. Mm, no. Let's discard one for to the sea and play Harbor Master for one. Then let's play our two refugees for one each. Okay, so we have lots of sailing ability here. Let's go off course and commit one, two, three, four, five, six to the sailing test. One, two, three, okay, four, five, six. 
back on course. And questing time. Now I did it properly. I've got an event here. So there are two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Actually, let's do 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Tons of willpower. I could even have more, but I'm trying to be conservative here. Reveal. Rolling seas. Shift your course off. Heading off course to travel here. Okay. 17 versus 6 is 11. You get 1, 2... Four, five, six. And we go on to the final quest stage, stage three. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for the ship enemy with the highest threat and add it to the staging area. Uh, okay. There's three. Oh, there's a four. I think four is going to be the highest, unless we can... No, there's only one card in the discard, so... Yep, it's going to be four. Boarding two. 37 engagement. Each raider enemy revealed by the Corsair deck by the Light Cruiser's boarding keyword. Enter play with one resource token on it. All right. Uh, travel, we can go to, no, we're just going to leave Rolling Seas there. Go into the refresh phase. And cancel the discard on my tomb. Start a new turn. Draw one, two, three. Good, that's what I wanted to see. Daron's runes, draw two, discard, my harbor master, I think, Daron's runes again, uh, actually, do I want to, I think I want to save that for when my deck is reshuffled so that I increase the probability of getting a um, Elrond's Council. So let me just play Evening Star for two and clear out this location. Um, then I will play this guy for one. Get back. Will of the West. Play it for one. And remove it from the game. Shuffling all this back into the deck. The uh, question is, do I want to discard a card and get Elven Light back in my hand first? Uh, probably not. Mm. Actually, yeah, so I'm going to discard my Sailor for Arwen's ability. And look at all cards. I actually just noticed that I've only got two Elrond's Councils in my discard, which means one of those three is Elrond's Council. So I'll get grab Elven Light for one, draw a card. We get to the C, and then play Daron's Runes and draw the last two. And we got it. Okay, uh, now what we can do is discard this 
sorry, this is still in my hand, all right? So now we will discard. We don't have any resources to play it, though. I would like to get Linder into play, so I will discard one, two, and then play Linder. There we go. Play Linder for free with Narlanya. Now we do the sailing test, and we don't want to fail, but we want to save as much willpower as we can. We need 10 progress, and there's 6 here. We could get another 4, which means 10. We need 20, potentially. I think that's doable. Um... So for the sailing test, let's do three. I could have, you know, saved some resources here and used uh, Lords of the Eldar on this turn to get a massive willpower boost. Three, four, and uh, I want to use that willpower on the quest. So five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, we got a success on our fifth one. So we're still on course. And now let's commit to the quest. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 17, 19, 22, 24, 25. And we reveal a card. It's Calm Waters. So it looks like we got smooth sailing out of the way of the Corsair Pursuit. And, yep, yeah, that's it. So I didn't end up needing Will of the West, which makes me wonder if it's needed. Uh, the card draw seems to be paced well enough to just fully exhaust your deck by the end. If I had, say, Steward of Gondor in this deck, I'd put it on Arwen, and she'd generate tons of resources, and you would draw through your deck much, much faster. Um, she would just be able to play an additional two Elven Lights every turn, which, you know, you discard them and then play them again, drawing more cards. So if you decide to make this into a power solo deck, you might w you might uh, definitely want to leave Will of the West in to recycle more. But I wanted to see how strong you could get the deck with um, an adherence to the Noldor theme. And it seems very powerful. I mean, being able to get Gildor out on turn one or turn two is a very, very strong move. Having a dedicated defender up who's immune to shadow effects by the second or third turn, who's got high defense if needed. It's very versatile. Um, if you do need the, the high levels of attack, it is a little harder to do that, but uh, you do have access to the Lords of the Eldar. I do wish I had more spirit resources. I felt like I was constantly in demand for Arwen's resources, and not so much for the lore resources. That's why every time I discard it, I put the resource on Arwen. Um, yeah, so Noldor likes to have lots of resources, lots of cards. And I feel with the more cards in your hand, and the more cards you're drawing through your deck, the more 
the more options you'll have for responding to different things. And it certainly feels that way. I think this is already a really strong archetype. And it's going to be exciting to see where it goes. Well, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the quest and the deck. Let me know what you think. Happy questing.